sponsors that made today happen, and I want to give them the justice of having enough time to talk about what they do. So we've got a couple people. They're going to have at least a minute to explain themselves. I'll make sure we blast out all their info, all the slides, anything that doesn't show up, I'll get to you. But I want what you guys are really here for is the content. Am I right? If I am, say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, whether it's dark in here and whether some things are not going perfectly, uh, we're going to just run this thing so that you guys can get out of here. Are you all cool with that? So we apologize in advance for anything going on in the background, but uh, we can only can control what we can control. So I'm going to bring up some of our sponsors right now, and hopefully I name them all without having them on the screen I can look at. But uh, I'll just, if you are a sponsor and you're supposed to speak today, I'm going to recommend you line up right here or I will probably forget you. Uh, just saying that one more time, if you're a sponsor and you're supposed to speak, come to the front or I'm going to forget you. Brain injury makes that harder too. So. Without further ado, let's bring up our first sponsor. They're all going to take just a minute, introduce themselves. Let's give a giant round of applause to Samantha with Home Team Mortgage. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Samantha. I'm business development manager for Home Team Mortgage. We have all of your traditional and non-QM products. But if you guys are anything like my realtor partners right now, we're looking for buyers, right? So if you guys want to host a home buyer seminar, whether you're an individual agent or a brokerage, I would be more than happy to host a home buyer seminar with you or an investor seminar. If you guys want to follow me, my Instagram is Samantha underscore home loans. And yeah, look for me afterwards if you guys are interested. Have a good one. Good morning, everyone. Jody Celebration Title Group. We are your favorite title partner. So today we're going to be talking about open houses, client experience, and how to maximize that. And of course, what we love to provide is the best client experience. So we are a true partner to you. We want to find out your why, your purpose, what gets you up in the morning, how you generate your business, and how we can help you grow, thrive, and really be your best in this market. So exciting announcement. I know I talked about it last month. We opened our new downtown space. It is a beautiful. So if you need somewhere to host team meetings, um, events, classes, workshops, happy hour, craft cocktail class coming soon. Uh, look for that. Um, anything you want to host, we'd love to have you guys come into our office. And um, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate all of your support. So good morning, guys. Welcome to the master class. Uh, my name is Nina Mills, and I'm the head of the Perp Department for Harding Bell International. Um, that's top Harding Bell is more than just FERPA. I need to say that. Um, we are a full service accounting firm, which means that we can help you with any of your accounting needs for both your foreign clients, your domestic clients, and if you're a realtor, that's one of our specialties as well. So check out our website at www.hbitax.com. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, hello, back. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Zach Blesnick. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for Home First Lending. Uh, just real quick, you know, there's, you know, I'm a mortgage lender, right? So what do we talk about all day? Interest rates, right? And every single real estate agent I talk with here in Central Florida, Zach, what's going to happen with rates? Well, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Hopefully they go back down. But what can we do to help your buyers get off the fence right now? And the reality is that your agents, if you're a team leader or yourself, all of us need training on how to overcome these objections. So that's what we're doing. We're working with agents on how to overcome these objections, but not just going based on opinion, going on fact and providing real solutions. So a solution that's been really creative for us lately, there's other mortgage lenders that offer, you've probably seen it, but it's a matter of understanding how to actually sell this product, the two one temporary buy down. So if you guys are unaware of what that is, if you have a rate conscious client because interest rates are at 6% today, you can secure them a 4% interest rate for the first year, a 5% interest rate for the second year, and then it goes back to what the current rate is today. But again, that's actually funded from a seller concession. For those of you who don't think you can get a seller concession, go on the MLS and look how many price drops there have been over the last 30 days. There, you gotta learn these skills on how to negotiate and get the best for your buyer. They'll be in a great low interest rate for the next two years, and then have the opportunity to refinance. If you guys want to team up and learn how to leverage this to get more buyers under contract right now, hit me up. Zach Blesnick, Home First Lending. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody. Oh, this is like serious. You got to like have a jump up. <laughs> hey, everybody. 
Pillar to Post, the Jeff Mackey team, Heather Hurry. Is everybody awake? Everybody good? Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. So just a couple things. First and foremost, I want to say for those in the room that I didn't get to thank for awarding a Partner of the Year, thank you so much, you guys. My heart. I get teary-eyed thinking about it. Stop. Stop. Thank you so much. So also, uh, Four Point, Windmit, WDO, inspections, right? There, it's just the plethora of things going on right now in the market. But I did want to mention this. Something else that I do, a little sidebar, is I'm a licensed instructor through DBPR to teach the e-classes. So if any of you would like to take advantage of me, that sounds a little weird, feel free to do that, okay? So and otherwise, everybody enjoy the panel. I I'm excited to hear from them. And everybody have a blessed day. We'll see you soon. I'm stage left if you need me. Give you a hand. You rock, Heather. Hi, my name is Vic DeVore with DeVore Design. We do real estate photography, photos, video, and uh, we're here to talk about Open Houses and Clients event tomorrow, 11 a.m. We've got a Brokers Open that we're sponsoring in Winter Garden. Uh, go to DeVore Design on Facebook and you can see the event. But when it comes to client events, last year DeVore Design sponsored uh, 42 client events within 12 months. I'm sure, thank you. Th these are client events for you guys, for the real estate industry. And I'm sure that the panelists are gonna talk about leveraging their relationships with vendors like DeVore Design. And uh, we support you, and I hope that you support us. Rusty and I, we do all kinds of different events together, a lot of boat days, right? <laughs> and um, so that's something that we can do with you. I hope that we can earn your business, and I hope we can do some events together. Before Rusty's big announcement, though, we're going to take a selfie together from stage. And let's hear it for Aaron Luden and Bryce for putting the Orpies on together. All right. I've got my flash on from the Killers last night. <laughs> and a big announcement from Rusty about his new app. He's giving away a hundred million dollars. Hey guys, R Rusty at ADP. A uh, real quick question. Uh, in your phone, how many have the ADP trash stalkers uh, blocked? Okay, that's, that's a lie. You guys are lying. It's okay. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, I have a new app to get rid of that problem. Uh, with the new app, you'll be able to gift your client a free, fully automated smart free Google doorbell, door lock, smart garage door opener, if they go on edp.com, $1,200 package, but because they work with you and you guys are kick-ass, it's free. Other side of that, on our app, you paid up $300 referral fee for every referral you send up. Highest commission or referral payment with ADP in the industry. Another aspect on the app that allows you, and these DXP people in here understand a downline, um, it allows you to recruit other agents on the app. You press one button, refer another client. Or no, I'm sorry, refer an agent. Every agent you refer signs up with the app and refers to ADP, you make $50 off every referral they ever send us, forever. We had someone yesterday, we're on 62 different people. So they're going to make passive income off referring ADP. So um, I will send out the information for the app. Aaron's going to uh, let me have access to all the emails. Uh, I'll send the registration. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Let's keep it going. Any other sponsors that need to speak? I'll try to name them all if they're not here. Uh, let's give a one, two, three clap for this year's contributor of the year, Shea Walker. One, two, three. Let's give a one, two, three clap for one of the finalists for partner of the year. That is Hope Richards with RTR title. And uh, who else am I missing from that? I can't picture it. So we're going to just keep going. Y'all ready to roll? And I apologize to any other sponsors that skipped themselves. But that's your fault today. Oh, one other thing we want to make sure is let's give a round of a, or a quick clap for all of the supporting sponsors. That's Central Florida Building Inspector, CFBI. That's Marlise with Orlando Estate Sale Ladies. You definitely need to check out both of them. We got Mikey right there at CFBI. Uh, we also have Title Genius who helped sponsor the Orpies. And we probably have one more that I am forgetting, and I'm sorry, and I'll probably name them later when I realize it screwed up. So you guys ready to roll? Let's give a round of applause for all the sponsors. <laughs> All right, we're going to get this thing started. So first, let's bring up our panelists. So Janine Al Seaman. Is Janine here? Janine, you're here, right? Let's make some noise, Janine. A top-notch real estate advisor known for her comprehensive market knowledge and unmatched devotion to clients with years of experience in the business. She's currently included in the top 10 
of all realtors in Orange County and top 300 producers in all of Greater Orlando, Central Florida. She founded the Al Cime Group at 2014, and her team's success is built on more than 80% of it being referrals from past clients. She prides herself in having built her business on client events before she even had clients. Is that fair? Uh, she'll tell you a little bit more about that. Has it, she's got a degree in marketing, she's got an MBA in business administration, and let's give a giant round of applause for Janine. <laughs> Next up, Rick Brown has lived in Orlando for over 40 years, and he's been in sales for most of his life. As a new agent, he took the industry by storm. He created the Brown Home Group at Keller Williams. He ranked in the top 500 in his first year ever. He's now in the top 100, in the top 1% of real estate teams in Central Florida. With his wife, Jean, by his side, they built their business on dedication, communication, and trust. His team has 11 agents, one assistant, and one social media person. And last year, they sold over $65 million. Can I get it? That's hot. Okay, only one of you wants to sell $65 million, and it's the guy that already does. <laughs> Just saying, 160 transactions. This year, they're already over $40 million in 110 transactions. His goal is to do $75 million in 200 transactions this year. Let's give a giant round of applause for Rick Brown. <laughs> Mariana, go birds. She moved to Winter Springs from Pennsylvania. What part of Pennsylvania? Philly. Philly, baby. In 2007, and became a licensed sometime agent. She followed that by being a part-time agent and finally went full-time in 2017. Since starting the Wartella Home Group in 2019, she's grown to a team of six with four agents, two admins. They're a client-centric driven team at their new brokerage, LPT. She's been a top producer for the last four years, lives in Winter Springs, and last year they sold over $23 million. This year, this year they've already sold $27 million and they are pacing for a $40 million year. I almost read this totally wrong. I thought it said I could speak Chinese. <laughs> I'm speaking on client events and will be asked. I, anyway, that part's not important. But she's going to speak about client events because she rocks client events at open houses. I've been to one of her open houses. Actually, let's give a giant round of applause to Mariana Lartella. And Karen Wilkins doesn't need much of an introduction because you all should already know her. She's been on our stage many, many, many times. But she is an amazing agent with a team that has, in my opinion, some of the best culture in the area. They sold over $30 million last year. Can we give a round of applause to that? And uh, 114 units last year. Or that, sorry, you're right. That was a 2019 email. I just realized that that's way off. As I said, I'm like, wait, that's why it's not right. What did your team sell last year? Because it's probably like 70 million or something crazier. I don't even remember because I'm not numbers, but it was 340 homes. 340 homes. So I'm going to guess that that was closer to 60 to 70 million dollars last year. Uh, but in 2019, she did sell 28 million. Just throwing it out there, in case anyone was wondering. Let's give a giant round of applause for Karen Wilkins. <laughs> What did they set out? I was like, that can't be right. But I was reading. And uh, did Jeff make it here today? Okay. Uh, Jeff had surgery and his shoulders in a sling. He couldn't put a shirt on. He couldn't do any of the stuff. He's super excited to speak about this someday. But uh, I told him, don't try to come out here and don't kill yourself over speaking about open houses. So let's get this thing started. You guys ready? By the way, when they're done, I got a special surprise for you, especially since you guys waited so long. Anybody ever read the book Seven Levels of Communication before? Okay. Make some noise if you like that book. If you don't know what book we're talking about, it's one of the best books, probably the best book ever written on getting referrals and building influence in relationships. And so Michael J. Mayer, he's been a number one best-selling author in the real estate sales category for like 10 years straight. It's been number one, like stays number one. He's going to be popping by and he's going to teach his system to doing client open houses and parties. Anyone think that's cool if you do? Let's make some noise. Let's just start the panel because we're going to get this thing going. So let's just talk about what types of events you do right now. What do you specialize in and how do you determine when you want to do an event? I know it's kind of ambiguous, but let's start with you, Karen. We what? were doing a lot of community events until COVID happened. Now we're trying to find our balance because every time we try another community event, we have a spike in COVID. So we, this year we're like, okay, forget that. We're just going to focus on client events, clear out 
before the monkey pox gets here and then, you know, focus on, you know, go back to community next year. But this year what we've done, some of the events we've done, we did a pumpkin patch, which was amazing. We just finished a skate night. We, um, what were our other events? We did? we did a family picnic, which was super fun. And um, but we did three really strong events. We had hundreds of our cast clients come, and it was a huge win. Okay, thanks. Um, so we just started doing events about, I started doing events about three years ago and recognizing that the database was, you know, where we're going to find uh, most of our clients. Um, but I hated making the phone call. So um, we found a way to, to make that happen by making the phone call be the invitation to the event. Um, this past year, uh, last year we did, um, during COVID actually, we did a safari event, the drive through safari. Um, we did a, um, the Citrus, uh, World of Citrus down in Claremont. We've done um, fo photos. Uh, this year we did photos uh, in February, photos with your family. Um, we also rented out, and this is very, very popular, we rented out a movie theater and did a first run movie of a Disney show. Um, so we, we do at least three to four events a year, and this year we just started doing, because we, our clients are all around Orlando, so this year we just started doing a traveling happy hour. Once a month we do a happy hour in a different area, invite the clients in that area. And so it's been very, very successful. So <clears throat> I'm up here for open houses, not for events. <laughs> <laughs> However, we actually, um, how many in the group here have kids? Show of hands? Yeah. So if you have young kids or even high school kids, um, I recommend getting involved into the schools. Um, I know, Karen, you didn't speak about it, but you're very in involved in schools. And that's something that we are really focusing on this year where we get back to um, the schools within our farming area. So if you work, you know, if you have a kid in elementary school, um, dive yourself in and do events for the schools. I mean, PTA puts on all these different events and you just need to be present. You need to be involved um, and try to at least provide, you know, like October, we've got Halloween. We're gonna be doing these little candy bags and obviously we're gonna be giving them out to the kids in the school. Um, it's not so much as that those kids are not going to be buying houses from us, but those kids have parents. And, and really, it's not about the buying the house. It's about giving back, and you will return that tenfold. Um, for us, client events are extremely important. I didn't like a lot of the traditional lead generation methods. I'm not a big cold caller, and I know a lot of you guys are not, but I wanted a way to stay in contact with my um, clients or get in front of people. That's why we started hosting client events. Our client events are a little bit different. They're not only targeted for our you know, past or current clients. We go after people we want to do business with, people that was on the other side of the transaction that we didn't represent. So that way, yeah, because a lot of you guys forget about your buyers after you sold them the house. Guess what? We go after them, right? We're inviting them to our events. We make them feel connected to our team. So that way, when they need to sell the house again, they may think about you, but they've seen me several times throughout the year. So some events we've done, of course, Top Golf. Our big one was during COVID. Um, okay. <laughs> our big one was during COVID. It was super simple. It was a Netflix and chill basket. It was one of our most popular one because of the toilet paper in the basket. Because, you know, at that time we had a shortage. So to answer the <laughs> so to answer the question, we determine our events based on what's going on, right? So if we're going to do a movie, what movie is people really connected to? Because we know our database, we know our client, um, what they like and what they don't like. So if it's something our clients would enjoy, we'll definitely do it. So we do quarterly events. We think about them beforehand. It's whatever is important to them at that time. That's what we would do. I hope that answered the question. Can you give us question. some examples, Jean? Um, okay, for example, when Top Golf was new, we, everybody wanted to go to Top Golf. 
I'm like, yo, come, come golf with me, golf with my family. Let's get to know each other. Everything's on us. Everybody wants to do that. Um, you know, what else we've done? Have you done pop stroke yet? Who What's here's been to pop stroke? What's pop Ooh, strip? I just gave you guys a super tip. I'm right down here. What's pop strip? Pop Tiger stroke thing, is right? Tiger Woods version of Top Golf. It's a putt putt. It's outside with a bar. There's no. Oh. It's not a driving range. It's a full putt putt. It's right in Waterford Lakes, and you should check it out. It's open. Okay. It's well, thank cool. you for that one. I have not done that one yet. It's called pop stroke. Yeah. So we've done a lot. Like one of our big ones is um, towards the end of the year we'll have a big dinner, right? Um, the key to client events, you guys, is to invite everyone and hope not everyone shows up. <laughs> <laughs> so our best events are usually on a Thursday. We've done mangoes where we've taken our clients to, to you know, enjoy a dinner and a show on us. We've done like, um, you know, exclusive restaurants for our VIP people. If you're referring us two to, two to, two to three referral a, a year, we want to thank you. We don't want to thank you with everybody else. We want to make sure you understand how important you are to us, right? So um, that's just an idea of how like, the different events we've done in the past. Sorry, I just realized this mic was off. Uh, let's talk about how you invite people to your events, what that actually looks like, and let's just, can everyone just kind of address a little bit or whoever wants to speak to it, uh, the fears of like nobody's gonna come and what actually happened instead. How do you how do you market it? And how do you what do you say to the people that are scared of doing it basically? It really depends on the event, but we we've tried to do an eight week process and, and the whole team we commit to doing it together, but we found that no one thinks eight weeks in advance, so we're really just wasting our time. So we do a four week process and on the first week we spend the entire first just calling, calling, calling. And we try really hard not to send text or leave voicemails. Or we'll just say, hey, call me back. I want to talk to you about something. Because, you know, like, this is the three to four times a year that we want to linger. We always talk about just slowing down, really enjoying the conversation. And um, then the next week, we'll send a video text. The next week, I can't wait to see you text. We drop everyone into an Eventbrite. So there's the automated reminder. And then we follow up with, thank you, we, uh, some of the events, we do photos at the event. We follow up with mailing the photos based on the circumstance, like what we did. Um, we did Christmas in July one year, and so we had a Key West Santa Claus, and everyone got a family photo that we mailed back to them afterwards. So there's just, you know, it, it depends on the event, but we're super intentional for four to six weeks. Can you tell me real quick what goes in the video that you said? Well, it depends on who the agent is and how creative they are. Sean's up here somewhere. He always goes really crazy on his, on his videos, which is, you know, if we just did 80 skate night. So he had the full garb and, you know, the language. Uh, Kevin, who's here somewhere, he, he put on his skates and skated around the office in his video and looked like a fool. Other people are just a little more, are, are you know, controlled, are you they, know. Are they thank you videos? Are they recap videos? Like, what's actually in Oh, the, the video? videos are on week two before the event, and it's just inviting people, reminding them. It's just a reminder. It's supposed to be something, a different lane to, a different touch, a different way to jar their brain, like, you know, because we, I mean, I, I get, there's some things we do strategically that we don't want people to show up, but this is, these events, the client event. We want everyone to be there, so we really want to bug them because we know once they've experienced it, suddenly they want all their friends to experience it because we make that night so special. Love it. How about you, Mariana? Yeah. Okay, so we um, touch our clients six times with every event. About four weeks, very much like Karen. Um, about four weeks beforehand, we send a uh, snail mail invitation. Then about um, between the four and the three weeks beforehand, we make a phone call to one of our clients. Did you get the invitation? Uh, we'd love for you to come. And then the nice thing is that's when the real estate starts to happen. That's when the conversation about real estate, not at the event. It's all about the invitation. Um, it, frankly, Ooh, can you say that one more time? Because that went over some heads, I think. It's not about the event. It's about the invitation. Ooh. So Say it you, a third time for me. <laughs> it's not about the event. It is about the invitation. Orlando Real Producers Partners, just throwing that out there. Uh, so, 
So we, okay, so then we, so we make the phone call, that's when we get a lot of um, interaction about real estate. Then we uh, send out the e-bite invitation, then we send a text reminder about the e-bite invitation, then we have the event, we send a written thank you, and then we make phone calls saying thanks for coming once again, this is our next event, or I'm so sorry that you didn't make it, this is our next event. So instead of making those full calls and asking them, who do you know that wants to buy or sell real estate, which didn't make me feel comfortable at all, um, that, that's how we end up talking about real estate. But I ended up start incorporating like video text. I thought that was a really good idea instead of doing the uh, uh, regular text. So um, just like you guys, we are, it's, our process is very similar. Uh, however, we will send a save the date to get the excitement, right? So um, it's, we have a six weeks process because the save the date is just to kind of tell you, hey, save, you know, September 10th. You're just saving the date. You don't know it's coming because our clients are always excited when they get a save the date from us. Uh, we don't say anything. Then we send a bomb bomb video the following week. Anyone that saved the date, we will thank you for saving the date and let you know what's coming. And if you didn't save the date, we're like, hey, we sent you some, you know, save the date information. You didn't send, um, you didn't respond. Hopefully, you can join us. Uh, then four weeks out, we start the videos. Uh, we'll start the videos, and we we send the video out on a Monday. We'll call them on a Thursday just to confirm that we they received the actual invitation uh, via Evite. And uh, if they RSVP'd, we're thanking them right away. If they didn't, that's okay. Uh, so two to three weeks out, that's when we really get aggressive, right? Hey, uh, Rick, we sent you an invitation. You didn't respond. How's everything going? And again, that's when the real estate conversations start happening. The majority of our return, we get it before the actual event, right? Because people feel as though now they're a part of your business. We're actually friends because you're seeing me three to four times a year. Um, so during the event, we hire a photographer because before we would take our own pictures, but it's not the same. Um, so again, we want to create moments that they can post on their social media. I'm having this event in hopes that you expose me. Right? What do you spend on the photographer? Sorry, Dave. Say that again. What do you spend on a photographer? Uh, it depends, like three to 500. It depends. It depends on the event and how long I want them there. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just know people are going to ask that. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so once we, after the event, we'll send them the pictures. They'll, they'll post the picture while they're at the event and tag us on there. You know why that's important? Now I'm exposed to their friends and family. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to ask you who do you know because you're bragging about your realtor all the time. And um, after the event, we'll either mail them or deliver the pictures to them depending on what the event was about. The most important people is the people that did not come to the event. We will send them a handwritten note telling them, sorry, we, we, you, know, you couldn't make it, hope to see you at the next event. So I'm prepping them and letting them know there's another event coming, right? Uh, and they, they feel so bad, they wanna do something for you. So call them first. So I always call them and say, hey Rick, sorry I missed you. Is there anything I can do? Is everything okay? Is the family okay? That gives me a reason to talk to them. And the people that did attend, of course, I'm going to follow up with them, but I just saw you. So the most important people to, in, in your database for a client event is the ones that, that couldn't make it. You really want to reach out to them. You guys are sensing I think, a pattern here on the stage? So, so I think also the big thing here, and I think we already had a ton of sponsors come up, really you need to align yourself with your vendor. Um, I know you said you spend three to $500 for a photographer, but I know Vic out there is such a giving photographer that he would probably come out and do it for just having the advertising. Advertising costs zero. Is that right, Vic? I just want to make sure. <laughs> hey, I just plugged you, Vic. Come on Especially now. Especially the right situation. But, but, but I do know there's a lot of great vendors out here that come to these events, and they will come to your event, and you will take zero out of your pocket. And all you have to do is give back to that vendor more opportunity. Right? I, I, I'm not doing an event, so I'm thrilled these ladies are giving me the ideas that my team, we, we probably could take our business to another level. But they're usually second time buyers. They already have a realtor. And with everybody in this room, you guys are amazing agents. You're probably keeping those buyers that are going to buy again and sell with you. 
They're going to come in and go, oh, I got a realtor. I'm good, right? So definitely price would be the first thing because three to 400 are your first time home buyers. So price, Those, location? Yeah, location. So obviously everybody's farming an area. I recommend you do an open house in an area you're familiar with. Know your location. So if you are the expert in Avalon Park, try to focus on Avalon Park. Would you also recommend the opposite, Rick? Like not to go to areas that aren't your place? Not to? Like you said you'd recommend to go to areas you know. Would you also recommend to stay away from areas that are not your specialty? So I would say if you're a brand new agent, it's easier to work within an area that you're familiar with. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that right now with the way the inventory is, that go to Kissimmee if you feel like you can get a good house that's going to bring you leads. Just know that you're probably going to sell in Kissimmee. So if you're an East Orlando realtor and that's where you're going to focus, just know that's where your traffic might come from. Got you it. know what? I would say if you're not familiar with an area, don't host an open house there. Because when you come into one of our open houses, I'm going to inundate you with information to make me seem like the expert in that area. So if, I, if you're engaging, I know that there's a possibility you might work with me, even if you say you have an agent. Once I'm giving you, it, let's say Winter Garden. I live in Winter Garden. I know everything about Winter Garden. You walk in a house in Winter Garden, I don't care who you are, you're gonna think of me when you go to this next house because I'm gonna tell you about the schools, I'm gonna tell you how amazing the restaurant, the area, the, you know, if you have kids, blah, blah, blah. So if you put me in Avalon Park, I know nothing about Avalon Park. You, you see what I'm saying? So I can read something to you, but I'm not being impactful. Because if I'm working in an area I specialize in, I'm going to give you way more information than the agent that you're working with can ever provide you. Right? I want you to second guess her the next time, or him, the next time they show you a home. So for me, even if I was a new agent, I would do business in areas that I'm very familiar with that I want to do business in. So if I'm hosting an open house, I know location matters. If it's your listing, you don't get to determine, you know, the location. Uh, you know, to piggyback of what you said, I'm also list looking for another listing in that area, right? So, yeah, I care about the buyers coming in, but I want someone else in the area to list with me. So when you come in, I'm giving you so much information, whether you're the neighbor or a looky-loo, whoever you are, I want to pour as much into you as possible. I want you to remember me when you leave that open. I love it. So on that same chain of thought, because you mentioned the neighbors, and then I'll go to you, Karen. What are you doing with the neighbors before or after the open house? Are you, are you knocking? Are you stopping? Are you dropping anything? So we're knocking on the doors. We're door knocking, inviting them only to the open house. Like I've never door knocked to ask someone, are you looking to buy or sell? When I'm door knocking, I'm, I'm there for a reason. Usually it's, hey, Aaron, how are you? We're hosting an open tomorrow from nine to five. We'd love to have you. You know, by the way, since I have you, what do you like about the neighborhood? What should I be telling the buyers coming in about your neighborhood? What type of buyer should I be seeking for this house I'm trying to sell? I don't really care, I just want you to talk to me, right? right? And I'm going to leave my flyer with you or whatever it is that I'm advertising the open with, so that way you remember me. Because I know people, you know, there's a lot of realtors. We have, I, I have to find a way to stand out. So once I take the first listing, I take the second one. By the third one, you've received six postcards from me. I've door knocked your area three times already. So when I'm walking the, you know, the streets, you're not like, who are you? No soliciting. You know, what you radius of, are you walking and knocking, and what mailers are you doing before or after? Are you are you sensing just listed or other things that complement? So we do we do a just listed uh, postcard for every single one of our listings. Some people say postcards don't work. That's on you. They work for us. Again, there's different lead generation sources that you can use. I chose the one that worked for myself and my team. So we'll do a just listed, just sold, always. So that's two um, two postcards. And then we'll usually do an open house uh, the first and second week of the listing. So. Karen, let's hear what you were going to add a minute ago. Well, they were talking about different aspects. One thing I would encourage you to do is to go into open houses and ask yourself, would I want to work with that person and why? Just 
watch the way people interact. One thing that I think is a huge turnoff is how you approach the person walking in. And so really ask yourself, if I were walking in, how do I want to be approached? What questions do I want to be asked? Come up with a script. Know, have a list of good questions that you memorize. Be very familiar with what... Can you, can you give us a few? Well, what, what, what you know, I'm, most of the time it's my buyer's agents in there. So one thing that we tell them to say is, I'm not actually the listing agent, so I don't care what, what you say. What did you not like about the house? And then just be quiet. Open-ended questions. But what you're now learning is they'll also tell you what they like, but it helps you see what they're really looking for, and it gets them talking versus you talking at them. They're just, hey, everybody's trying to sell me when I walk in here, but what I want to do is I want to know you. Or how many open houses have you seen today? Are you going to look for more? And we encourage our agents to keep a list of other open houses. Don't live in a... Don't, don't don't be scared that they're going to go see Rick Brown because we're going to beat Rick Brown. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. But, but if they're going to my open house, they're also going to Rick because we're in the same area. And so tell them we're Rick's open houses. There's something about generosity that puts people in. So it just you can make your own list, but what do you want to be asked if you were walking in with a stranger? What's going to put you at ease versus selling them. I think that's super important. I think that's why we have high conversion rates because we really focus on relationship, not on conversion. I think, and I think what Karen's getting at is um, we build commonality. When somebody comes into your open house, you really want to try to connect and Karen's 100% right and, and take their guard down because initially if you start asking closed-ended questions, you are going to get the yes-no answers. So I highly recommend never asking, are you working with a realtor? Because I guarantee you they will say yes. Yeah. We always just, when somebody walks in, very similar to Karen, we say, I'm a buyer's agent. I work for you. And then I shut up. And I just wait. If they're working with a realtor, they're going to say, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I work with Karen Wilkins at Wilkins Way. If they know the name and it comes off the tip of their tongue, great. But if they say, I don't know, it's that balloon with the red, yellow, uh, no. That's not working with a realtor. No offense to any Remax, but I feel like you do have to connect. So if they come in and they're wearing a New York Yankee shirt, I become a Yankee fan, right? <laughs> Whatever it takes to build commonality. So ask questions like, what do you do for a living? Why are you moving to Orlando? Where are you coming from? If you can build that and you somehow can grab something that and even if they come in with kids, if you have kids, there's something you can connect with. You'll see the change in the way their mannerisms are from putting that guard up to dropping it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, one thing that we do, and again, you guys can take the notes, the sign-in sheets that are in the kitchen that you make them go to the kitchen to sign in doesn't work. Right? We use clipboards. They're $2 a piece small five, three by five clipboards. And we have a sheet that actually has the information that they need to fill out. And then you flip it over. If you're a new agent, we have a cheat sheet for you that actually tells you the questions you should be asking once their guard goes down and once they are open to now start talking about what they actually want. So Rick, yeah? what are the questions on the sheet that they fill out and what are the questions you're recommending on the back of that sheet? Yeah, so obviously, if you can't get their name, their phone number, and their email, you're screwed, right? Hey, pretty much you got nothing. So that's on the first sheet. But then we also, because we say we're a buyer's agent and I work for you, and they say, okay, great. I'll say the seller has asked if you would just walk around and give us some feedback. So we have one through five, curb appeal, decor, stuff like that. Obviously, we want to know if the price is in, in line. Is it too high, too low, right? And then what did you like the least about the house and what did you like the most about the house? Yeah. The, the reason also is because we can then make photocopies of that and give that to you, the listing agent, so that you can give that to your seller, right? We want more open houses and we want to be the open house opportunity. So we'll send those to you because if they're working with a realtor, then you're going to get all the information on the feedback side. But you're not getting my name, my email, and my phone number, right? That being said... Then you flip the page over, and now you got the questions. If I'm a brand new agent, I'm like, what the hell do I ask, right? How many bedrooms are you looking for? If they come into this house, 
I usually ask them, how did you find me? Was it from the signs or was it from the internet? They go, oh, we just were looking at signs and we saw it on the way in. Yeah, I'll make a joke. Oh, my signs are still up. Cool, right? But you don't know what you're standing in. So you're standing in a three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,200 square feet. Oh, there's no pool. Oh, you want a pool? Well, flip that page over and start asking questions to now start determining what makes sense for your buyer. And like Karen said, and she's 100% right, I will make sure before they leave my open house, they know who I am, they know who I work for, and they, I know what they want. Because when they go to Karen's, they're going to say, Rick Brown, Brown Home Group, Keller Williams, Advantage Shoe Realty. Love it. Used to be my realtor. All right. All right. I, here, here's what I'm looking for now before we keep going. On, or, or maybe you guys can chime in on this. Let's talk about not just what information you collect from everybody, but also... And if anyone has a different way you collect info, feel free to share it. But how you collect info, what you collect, and then what do you do with it after? So um, unlike Rick, we do a paperless system. Um, so we have a QR code that they um, uh, take a picture of and give us all the information. It goes directly into our database. So if you gave us a wrong number, uh, we have this... Uh, uh, AI that will text you right away. If it's a wrong number, like while you're in the open house, it'll be like, hey, provide us with a better number so that we can reach you. Uh, so that makes it, uh, that forces them to give us the right information. Um, what else? What was the question, Aaron? I'm sorry. What, what do we do? What you different? do with the info and what you collect. Okay. So once we have the right phone number, the goal is to call them the day of the open house, right after the open. Uh, I don't care if you said you had an agent. I I'm calling you just to thank you for stopping by and to you know, say, hey, is there any other feedback you can provide me so that I can relay that to the seller, right? But then after that, I'll just kind of engage in conversation with you further, because if you're talking to me, I'm going to continue to talk to you, right? And before we know it, I'll say, hey, you know what? I know you were looking for a 5-2. Our property wasn't a match. Is it okay if I send you some additional you know, properties that we have that you may not have seen in the Apopka area? If they say yes, guess what? I'm going to continue to send them homes until they tell me not to. And I'm going to follow up with them every single time we send them some homes to see what they like, what they didn't like. Now, all of a sudden, the person that told me they had an agent is now communicating with me more than they're communicating with their agent. So I provide more than enough value, so that way they would at least consider us in making that when they're making the decision. Because until they write an offer, they're not committed to anyone, to be honest with you. They would be willing to work with whomever they trust is going to get them across the finish line. Okay, so that was awesome. Um, actually, we use the QR code as well. Um, I just wanted to share one other thing, though, um, and I and I just gleaned this the other day from a from a class I was in, and that was to involve the seller in the open house, have them actually it was in Michael's class, and involve you know be a be um, part of the team, have the seller send out. Uh, put on Facebook that there's an open house with your information on it. Have the seller put out an email to their database. Hey, I'm having an open house. Not only does it, it advertise your open house, but it also advertises you to their database. So really, and also now you're a team. And once you're a team, they're going to have put as much effort into it as you are. So uh, thank you for that. Um, so we, yeah, we use the QR code, we follow up usually the next day, but I love doing it the day of. And I also think um, there are a number of people who use videos, and I think that's a great idea. Just like, you know, maybe you're driving home and you just, so, you know, quickly take a quick vi video at a red light. Hey, thanks for stopping in at, the, at my open house today. And follow up that way. And loved all the questions that you asked them. Okay. So um, we do something that's called five days of pain, okay? First day is in the open house. Yes, video text. Stand in front of the kitchen, stand in front of the house. Immediately at the end of your open house, you're going to say, hi, this is Rick Brown. You came to my open house at 123 Main Street. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow and make sure you're getting taken care of. Done, right? 30 seconds or less. We don't have that much attention span. Day two you're going to 
you're going to pretty much do what we call a buyer's advantage program, right? So during the open house, you're going to tell you, I'm going to put you on my buyer's advantage program. Oof, I want to be on that. Well, buyer's advantage program is the MLS search, guys. No hidden, no hidden secret there, right? <laughs> Day two, though, you're now going to set them up on that MLS search or that buyer's advantage program. And in that buyer's advantage program, you're going to say, want to make sure you did get my video text. Thank you so much for coming to my open house. From our conversation, here are some of the homes that I have found. I'll be following up with you tomorrow to make sure you're getting taken care of. Yep. Day three is a phone call. Now, this is only if they haven't responded to you guys, right? We're causing some pain here. That third day is a phone call, and it's just the same thing. I just want to check and see if you got my dang email. You got my video text. I'm still not hearing from you, right? Is there anything that we can do kind of thing, right? Day four, depending on the age of the individual. If it's an old person, guess what? You're picking up that phone again, and you're calling again, right? Hey, Rick, but if it's young, you're video. old, out of curiosity. Oh, sorry. I'm just kidding. Me. Me. <laughs> Me. So, yeah. Don't answer that one. But I just think so far as, I don't know about the ones of you who have kids, but if I text my kid, she answers right away. But if I call her, it goes right to voicemail. So, again, the, the age kind of makes a difference. And then day five is an email. And here's the kicker. In the subject line, where did I go wrong? That's it. Put that in the subject. Trust me, you will get a response nine times out of ten that, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, we're already working with Karen Wilkins. Leave us alone. Whatever that looks like, right? I mean, that is our five days of pain. Now, do you stop after five days? No, you can put them onto a drip and keep following up. Why? Because they may be working with an agent that they found on realtor.com that isn't doing what they said they were going to do, and you've contacted them five times, and that real estate agent hasn't contacted them once, right? They will potentially come back around, but that is my follow-up on you know, Love five it. days of pain. Love it. Karen? Uh, anyone want to add something to that before I ask the next question? I do. I think we talked about, you know, during the open, but what happens before? How do you get people there? Um, you know, I know a lot of new agents. A lot of times we're hosting opens where no one shows up. How do you make sure that you can host an open that is really successful? For us, we do it a little bit differently. Of course, we're going to be door knocking, and you want to have as many signs as possible. For us, we have at least 20 to 25 signs. So um, you're going to sweat a lot at the beginning, right? Because you have sweat equity. If you don't have any money, if I was an, uh, a new agent, I would be hosting an open house, if not every day, every weekend. Because think about it, we can work from anywhere. You could lead gen anywhere. Why not sit in a beautiful home where there's a possibility a few people may walk in, right? So um, during the week, if you have husbands, employ them. If you have little kids, uh, I have a lot of children, so uh, they get to help me with the signs. The more signs you want, you have, the more people will you just stop by, and that's what you want. Um, so for us, we have like a five- to seven-day process that we use. Um, it's a system that we use before we even host the open. And for a new agent, I know if, you know, someone in your office is like, hey, do you want to host my open house for me? And most of you say yes. No, go visit the home. See if it's even, you know, a, a area that you want to be in, right? How's the traffic flow? Um, I, I remember when I was new, I hosted an open house in Tavares, right? Where there was very few traffic. I had zero people come in. And I, then I knew, you know what, before I ever host an open, if it's not my own listing, I want to do my due diligence, how long has the property been on the market? If this property been on market for 150 days, I'm not going to host it open, right? So there's a lot that happens before the open house to, in order to do everything we're saying that you should do while you're hosting the open. Love it. I got two questions. Uh, I want to hear somebody talk about what they do online, somebody that does a lot online, any of you that want to share your strategy to getting people from online to come to an open house in person. But really quickly before I do that, has anyone here learned something so far? Maybe if you have, make some noise. Since we started, since we start, we're still going, so don't worry. Since we started a little rush, I want to promote one thing. If you guys could pull out your cell phones right now, we do this on the third Thursday of every month, and there are two Masterclass Orlandos left, and then it is done. We're rolling out something brand new next year that, yes, we are rolling something out. Those of you that keep asking me, what are you doing next, you'll see. 
and uh, it will be something else somewhere else, and you will enjoy it if you come. So uh, we have two more sessions left. Next month is October 20th. That is the pink out session. Alyssa's already dressed perfectly for it, but that is, it's the pink out women's panel. Last year we had an amazing time. We had five of the top seven women in Central Florida real estate on a panel. Next month we're gonna do essentially the same thing. We're gonna have four or five women from the top 25 in Greater Orlando, all speaking about their careers, their business, how they built it. All the money is gonna go to Team Gina, which is a breast cancer foundation in town, local one. And uh, so wear your pink, come on out. But here's what you gotta do, here's why your phones are out. If you go to masterclassorlando.com, hopefully I didn't screw this up and it will still work, you can register now. And the first 75 tickets are free. The next 200 tickets cost 10 bucks a person. The $10 goes to Team Gina, so it's not like it goes to the worst thing. But there are about 100 of you in here, so you guys should get all the free tickets. All you gotta do is pull out your phone, grab the free ticket now. Don't worry, I'll give you each a code since you can't go on your phone now. And go to masterclassorlando.com, grab the tickets for yourself, for your team. It's spelled the way it sounds. If you don't know how to spell it, I apologize. Uh, but since most of you do know how to spell Masterclass Orlando, this is my reminder to hashtag Masterclass Orlando with it spelled right online, post your pictures from today, and we're gonna raffle off a bunch of stuff. I'll give a few people some uh, real producer swag just for posting. But let's go back to the panel. Anyone excited to learn some more from them? Anyone excited to learn from Michael Mayer in a few minutes? I would say that one more time. Who wants to learn from the number one international best-selling author that wrote the best book on client parties and referrals? Let's make some noise. All right, here's what I wanna ask you guys. What, um, okay. Basically, what are you doing online? That's the first one I wanted to get from you guys. Who's doing something that works online and what does it look like? We're not super fancy online, but we have found that getting involved in the local community of uh, pages and making sure that we regularly post on them and then we just regularly post on all of our lanes and sometimes we email our open houses out. So that's it, nothing fancy, but we do, I, I, we have a following that comes to our page because we do open houses so regularly and sometimes if we don't have open houses that weekend, I'll get a message or they'll come into our, one of our social media messages and say, oh, no open houses? I'm like, oh, I didn't know you were watching. But, By yeah. the way, can I just make a comment on that? A lot of you guys are posting your open houses in the wrong places. You're literally, some of you guys are trying to post your open house in the Orlando Real Producers Top 500 group. You're putting it in the Orlando Real Estate Mastermind. You're putting it in. I made a group for Central Florida Open Houses and Brokers Open just because everyone was asking where to put them. People post every day to a group full of realtors. I have no clue why. I spend no time in there. There's thousands of you that go out of your way to post your open house to a bunch of other agents. And in the end of the day, all you had to do was go into the Avalon Park group or go into like, right, these community groups are the place, your own walls, your own people, not pushing it to a bunch more agents, especially if you're looking for leads. Just want to throw that out there. So um, video wise is definitely powerful. Um, and the big thing though, is if you're doing an open house for another listing agent, first and foremost, make sure that listing agent puts it in the open house seller. Because if not, it will not hit the internet at all. So obviously, if it's your own listing, that's a different story. But first and foremost, you want to make sure that they get it into the MLS so that it does go out to the public through all the different facets of internet. Um, we do an open house video right before we do the open house. We're hoping that our open houses are extremely busy. So we want to get it in and out so that um, the, the people that are in the neighborhood like the Avalon Park groups, you know, we're, we're actually saying, hey, we're here today from one to four. And that's the other thing, time-wise, we have found that on Saturday and Sunday, one to four is the best time. Some people say 11 to two, I don't know, if I'm young and I'm Friday night, I'm not getting up and getting to an open house by 11. So the busiest time is gonna be that one to four, especially on Saturday and Sunday. Um, during the week, and I think uh, somebody spoke about it, if you're a new agent, I think you did, when I first got in this business, guys, I was doing them seven days a week, one every day. If you get one buyer every day, how many buyers did you just potentially pick up, right, in a week? And, and like somebody said, I can sit in an open house, obviously if it's vacant, and, and pretty much do my own work. I can make calls. I can lead generate, right? But if one person comes in on a Tuesday, um, I've picked up a buyer. Is anybody coming into your office and saying, hey, can I speak to so-and-so? No. So definitely, when it comes to videos, um, I would say within 48 hours of your open house, because that's when 
the buyers are on Thursday looking for their weekend to see where we're going for the next open house. And video is definitely powerful. Um, for us, uh, we have a uh, marketing person that helps us with our social media presence. So if we're hosting an open, I want all of my past clients to know about it. So we have a closed client group. We're just posting in there. We don't, just to show you that we're still in business, we're still doing business, right? Uh, then we'll buy, we'll create an event on Facebook, uh, and then we'll buy ads on Facebook and IG. Again, you may not come to the home, but you're consistently seeing that, you know, we're marketing beautiful homes, we're hosting them open, and, uh, you know, eventually, uh, the, the people on social media, your sphere of influence become your core advocate, right? They start promoting for you. Uh, so that's how we're using social media as far as um, to advertise our opens. So we do a lot on Facebook, um, and we, uh, I happen to be an admin on a couple of groups for uh, moving to Florida. And so I do post our open houses there. I'll post my open house on all the community groups. Um, and I, I'm just kind of thinking as you guys are talking, like, I would post on the Orlando Sentinel, you know, in the comments section. Post until you, they tell you to stop. You know, try to get as many in the audience possible. Not only are you advertising the open house, you're advertising yourself. And so I uh, actually have never paid for ads for it. an open house. I think that's a good idea. And I have a question for you. Um, how about during football season? Is one to four still the same, a good time? Have it on the TV inside the house. <laughs> so. Okay. That's a good question. And do you do your weekly open house at night or during the day? At night. Yeah, sorry, you can't hear me. I wanted to ask you guys about once, what types of props and what types of setup materials do you have for your open houses? I know Rick talked about the clipboards, but I just want to know if there's anything else that we didn't get, because that's on my short list. We, we set up a table. We have purple tablecloth so that, you know, they're identifying with our purple ways. Um, they have the sign-in sheet. We have at the front door, please kindly sign in, and we blame it on the owner. I can't remember the verbiage, but we blame it on the owner, that the owner would like everyone coming through their home to sign in. Um, we always have pins out, some swag for people to pick up. We do not do food and drink and all that. I feel like you're just open, opening yourself up for a little opportunity to have a mess. So people want relationships. They love to take a pin. We, we have our cheap open house pins that are always there for them to take. We, we created our own sign-in, and I do it in a spiral notebook, and I just get them printed at Home Depot, and then each agent has their own spiral notebook that they can front and back, and they have a couple of them, so they can have them all laid out. Flip them. So, again, I keep digging our vendors, but can we give a round of applause to our vendors that are here? By the way, Reach I'm going to throw it out, out there. If you need some more vendors, download our preferred partner list. It's Boom. This month's copy of Real Boom. Boom. There's a QR code that comes um, up. But definitely reach out to title, um, title companies that are on that listing. They need to promote that listing just as much as you do. Get a raffle, get a basket, don't pay for it. Yeah. Now when somebody comes in, you can say, hey, just for signing in, you get to have an opportunity to win a raffle of whatever that is, right? I'll, I'll plug one of our sponsors. Sile Insurance will give you a wine basket for basically any open house. I, I'm pretty sure they haven't stopped that program. They've done it forever. Yep. And I know a lot of uh, loan officers are in this room. I don't know if they'll sit with you at an open house. Sometimes it's, you feel a little guilty when nobody's coming in and they're there. But they will print out nice forms that tell what, you know, uh, FHA, VA, put those out there because obviously we're not the expert when it comes to the, the lending side, but it's a, it's a conversation that you can have. And then obviously you can direct them to a lender. And if the lender's there with you, that's even better. Um, food? No. I used to make cookies. Okay, I lied. I didn't make the cookies. I bought the cookies. <laughs> now we can't do the cookies. Um, I do see when I go to some open houses, you know, anything closed. Um, but when it comes to signing in, if you're not doing a raffle item, I hate to say it, guys, but we still can use that COVID thing, right? Hey, you know, just for COVID reasons, I need you to sign in, right? 
Uh, also, can I mention something on the in. food? Can I mention something on the food? A lot of y'all need to find which place is super affordable to do something nice. Like, I'll give you an example. I don't know if they still have sweets by Holly in Waterford. I'm pretty sure it moved. Or, but I know that, like, on Tuesday afternoons, you get cupcakes for a dollar with your brand. They, so they quit, see? But you got to find things like that. You should know that, like, you might have an open house on Thursday, but, like, we would know our parties on Thursday, but I could buy... 200 real producer cupcakes for $200 on Tuesday, I'm gonna grab them and take them and give them to y'all on Thursday. So just a thought that you, like it sounds silly, but if you have things that you wanna give out or do at these events, figure out like the routine, even if it doesn't match your exact day, and know that when I order from this place, I can do something nice and it's super affordable and within what I feel good about. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I do wanna ask you, did you have some more that you were there? I wanna ask each of you, like what's a win? When it comes to an open house, a client event, anything like that, how do you know it went well? How do you evaluate the, whether, or not it was a, whether or not it was a success? And when do you feel good about having outlaid money to do these events? Like, how do you know that it was worth the investment? Well, for, for me, one, one buyer coming into my open house for three hours at 200,000, if I can make six grand, is that a win? That's a win. If you get two, that's a really big win, right? So that's kind of how we measure if you get one coming through your open house, Love it. that's a win. Let's, let's go down the line here with the ladies that do events, too. Karen, how about you? To me, it's consistency over time, every day. Everyone in East Orlando knows that on Saturday and Sunday, there's even little kids from our church that says, when will Miss Karen Sines come out? Like, everyone knows Miss Karen Sines. And it doesn't even look like me. It's, it's not me. It's my daughter now. That's who it is on that sign. But who cares? That sign is, like, iconic to who and what happens on the weekend. So to me, if you can just be consistent, patient, do the right thing every day, whether it's your event, it's your open houses, we, we so want to short side this process, but it is a process. Relationships don't happen overnight. Marriages aren't perfect after the honeymoon, you know? So you have to work at any of these things, and after a while, you will see lots and lots of fruit. So to me, it's a win if the signs go up because you've done something in the process of consistency. So for me, um, I guess the event actually isn't the win. And I, like I said before, it's not, about the, it's not about the event, it's about the invitation. When I go back and I realize that my sphere of influence, uh, my, my referrals, my, uh, my clients, my sphere of influence is, uh, referrals have doubled every year over the last three years. And the thing that I've done consistently and that which was new over the last three years is events. And so that, that's my big win. When I went from making, you know, 10% of my business was only uh, referrals and uh, repeat clients, and now I'm at 64%. Hopefully next year it'll be even more. So that, that's me what, where the win comes from. Yeah, I would agree consistency is the win. Honestly, if you do it enough, I promise you it will pay off. When we host our very first event, we had six people attend. We couldn't really afford it. We didn't have any partners. Today, I'm grateful we have amazing partners, right? Uh, the people that we work with support us 100% because over time, the return have been there. I no longer have to say, if you support me, this is what you get in return. So for me, it's consistency, is doing it even though uh, the times that we didn't want to do it. Like when we were terrified, you know, during COVID, COVID. COVID, that year was our best year simply because we kept showing up. After then, the Netflix and chill basket, we did poinsettias for them during Christmas, right? It's the little things. We couldn't host events in person, but we made sure that they, they knew that we were thinking about them, right? So um, I think consistency over time is... Uh, I'm going to share a little thing on that because most of you don't know this. I think people like Todd were probably there, though, but like our first event before Real Producers even started was turkey time. And we raffled off a bunch of turkeys. Every We had this big party. We had like Cadoba, a bunch of sponsors set up with like their little vendor table. It was basically an expo with stuff being given away. Every 15 minutes we raffled off a turkey like right before Thanksgiving. It was silly, it was stupid, it made no sense. But like I think Todd might have even come there. But, uh, but that's like where we started. And you know like last week we had 600 people and I don't know, $100,000 spent on a party at the Hard Rock. So it's like, you know, like things grow over time. 
as you stay consistent with them, and you'll grow with those partners who, like David Frazier was probably at Turkey Time too, you know? And a lot of those same sponsors are the sponsors that are in our rooms today, but we've built our relationships over time, and what we're able to do together, like people like Old Republic, like we grow with the level of trust. So a lot of you come to these things and you're like, oh, I can go hit up my sponsors or my vendors, and then you go ask people for money and you haven't sent them a lot of stuff, but like the relationship's built by delivering. Does that make sense? So like we consistently deliver for the people who support the things and then they want to continue to support if, if it's a fit. So um, that's the other side of it is to really, I would also not only ask your affiliates and partners for money for these things or for support, I would ask them what it looks like for them to win. I would say, hey, for you to support this event, what needs to keep happening for you to keep wanting to do this? Most of you guys never ask that. You just get someone to stroke the check and then like the events end up mediocre because your sponsors aren't that excited and your people aren't that excited and you barely got the money to do it. Has anyone ever been there with what I'm talking about? So I think that the big like, principle is it grows over time, it grows with trust, and it grows with your care and by delivering the results. Would you guys agree with that part? Um, I don't even remember what we were on. Do y'all remember what we were still answering? Oh, find a win. Anyone else uh, want to tell, do we all, did we get through all of us? Anything else that anyone wanted to add that we didn't add from this panel? Um, I would just say just do it. If you're in the room, you're here for a reason. I believe in signs. Um, you know, if you're not hosting open houses, start hosting them. Love find it. them. Go do it. If you're not hosting client events, Find amazing partners, Alyssa and them, you know. Um, find amazing partners and um, have them help you. Um, I remember, uh, you know, I'm going to throw Paul out there. We were, we were hosting an event. We were giving back to school. I was just telling him what we were going to do. The next thing I knew, they had a cart full. So we were doing a back-to-school backpack, right, that drive. Well, we didn't know the school didn't need backpacks. They needed undergarments. We didn't know that. So I called my partners. They were like, oh, my God, I'm willing to help. We just met Paul, had no idea who he was. And the next day, he, he, t he brought, like, a cart of underwear, which was weird, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, like, someone like that, I want to partner with you. I want to work with you because I didn't give you anything. You came through for me, right? So find your partners. Well, they're more than partners. They're almost like family because we talk to each other a lot. They know they're in my business. They're inside of my business, right? And they know when I'm having a hard time. They know when things are great. I need them more when I'm not succeeding at a high level, right? Uh -huh. So go find your partners and have that conversation with them. And I promise you that's going to explode your business. Love it. Can we get a giant round of Oh, let me let Rick answer this thing. But let's get a giant round of applause for our panelists. Rick, I'm going to let you get the last word, but don't so, but wait, because I'm going to bring up our special guest speaker. You're definitely going to want to hear from him. He shared the stage with Tony Robbins, former President George Bush, and a bunch of other people, so you're going to want to hear from my promise. He's the stadium speaker, and it's in a small group of people. So, Rick, what did you want to so, add? So I would just say that, you know, open houses is a form of lead generating, period, right? We all have our different ways of doing it. I don't choose to door knock, um, so I do open houses. And it, just a statistic is 75% of buyers come from an open house. So just think of that when you're doing other forms of lead generating, success can come from an open house. And I agree with you, just do it. Right. Love it. Let's give our panelists a round of applause. And we have a celebrity in our midst, someone who helped inspire the launch of Masterclass Orlando and whose book is really the center of piece of how we run real producers here. So could everybody jump to their feet for a second? While the panelists are switching out, let's give a giant round of applause to the panelists and Mr. Michael J. Mayer. Oh, panelists, real quick. Janine. Janine. Real quick, we need you, Janine. Quick photo, come here. Hey, we're going to take a quick photo with the panelists. And Michael, since you're up here, we're ready to get you started, but we're going to shoot a photo and then let you start. Why not, right? Look at Tam. All right, Michael, I'm going to give you my mic. Go for it, man. What? You want me to use those for now? Hey, first and foremost, let's give a huge round of applause for why we're all here today, Mr. Aaron Luden, right? Let's put that together. 
I have to tell you, first and foremost, I've never seen anybody implement the referral mastery system as fast or as well as Aaron. Do you guys remember when he was doing the networking stack where he was doing appointments back to back when he had the broken leg and he would take the selfies in the booth? Do you guys remember that at all? Have you guys been in the business for over five years? I'm just throwing it out there, right? This is about five, six years ago. So first and foremost, my name is Michael J. Mayer, uh, which may not mean anything to you, but I've created this system called the Rural Mastery System. It has three components. One is self-mastery, which is basically connect with yourself, your growth plan, become better, become more referable. The second one is relationship mastery, which is one-to-one. -one. That's part of the networking stack. I taught that strategy this week. My voice is really sore, or my throat is really sore. My voice is really weak. It may even crack, and I just want you to know it's not because of puberty. I'm, I'm, I think I'm through that part. So, but relation, different mic. There we go. Look at that. He's all over there. All right. So relationship mastery, which is really one-to-one. -one. How good are you in consultations? How good are you in listing presentations? And then the third pillar of re the referral mastery system is event mastery. And you had the opportunity to see event mastery on this stage today. I took two pages of notes on my phone while I'm back there listening to this panel. I hope you did too. Like one of them, are you inviting your sphere to your open houses? And if not, why not? They should be invited through email. Listen, they, won't, they don't want to get your stinking real estate market updates. They don't. They don't care. They don't speak that language. You know what they want? They want an invitation. The number one reason to contact your database is an invitation. So make that happen. And then the other thing, where's Janine at? She leave. Like, here's the thing, right? I mean, I'm telling you what, I love that. I love her. She, she rocked it. Did you notice one very important word she used with the people who support her event? They're partners. They're partners. And I encourage you to maybe change the word from sponsor and vendor to partner and change the word when it comes to your charity is make it be a charity partner. Are you including charities in everything you do? How about Aaron Luden modeling that for us with the Operation Underground Railroad and what he's doing next month? That, it, it's a beautiful thing. And here's the thing. Generosity wins. People will literally work with you because you've partnered with a charity. Whether you deserve it or not. If I say, hey, listen, I'm having an event. Please bring a blanket. And I, how, how, how much does it cost me to put that on the invitation? Zero. When we have the event, 100 people bring a blanket. Who wins? Everyone. I win, even. They win. And what's great is when you donate the blanket, don't you feel great, too? So they win. And then the charity, of course, wins as well. And I will tell you, when you're doing your events, please add educational components entertainment components, charity components, and sponsor components. You have those four and you will win. The thing about events that I love is you can make money making money. It's the only thing legal that I know of that you can make money making money. So you make money on the event because of your sponsor partners and you're gonna generate leads for them as well using Event Mastery. And then you're gonna have the charity which is going to be a win, 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 win. Doesn't cost you anything more. Have a little bit of an educational component. Did, did Aaron have an educational component today? Like one of the best ever. And then you gotta have that entertainment option. And, and I don't know what that's gonna be today. It's sure not gonna be me, because I'm not very funny. But the thing is, is have those four components and you will be a success. So the other thing I wanna do is if you're a sponsor partner of this event, I want you to stand up, stand up. Listen, or, or here's real the thing. producers in general. And all the partners are real producers. Yeah, so, so let's give them a huge round of applause for making this happen, right? It's awesome. Use their services. Check them out. If they're good enough for Aaron, I'm telling you right now, they're good enough for you. Thank you. You're welcome. So here's the other thing, is I want to invite you. I would be remiss if I were in town and not invite you. And, and, and Aaron hit it on the head, it's so funny, he used the story, is I, I'm gonna be in town, and I was gonna be in town, it happened to be the same week as, as Masterclass Orlando, 
And Aaron reached out to me and said, hey, listen, you're going to be in town. Make it happen. Well, my flight was this morning. I missed it. I'm just kidding. What I did is I changed my flight. So by him inviting me, I changed my flight. So the bottom line with your invitations is invite everybody. Invite everybody. Go to your Facebook groups of agents out of town and invite them to your events that you're doing in Orlando because quite simply, you don't know if they're going to be in town or not and you're home of the world's happiest place. You just never know when they're going to be in town. Thank God you're in Orlando, huh? But the thing is, is I moved my flight to be here today. And it, it wasn't that hard. But the thing is, is people will move their flights to be at your events. They will move their flights because of the relationship you've built. So invite everyone. I truly believe the biggest opportunity in the market right now is events. Open house events and your own events that you host. And the thing about it is when you host the events, don't host them alone. You've got to have sponsor partners, have partners, do them together, rally together, and make it happen. So speaking of events, I want to invite you. Is it okay if I invite you to Referral Mastery Summit? You don't have to sign up. It's okay, right? But I have to tell you, I've been inspired this week. Getting me out of my house, I'm a huge introvert, is literally like plucking a butterfly out of a cocoon. You know what I mean? Like, it was like taking me out of the house was almost impossible. I did not want to come. How many of you have ever had an event or something you had to do that you didn't want to do? Right, four of you. Thank you for relating with me. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, it's like an event. It's one of those where I don't want to go, I'm not sure if I want to go, and then I'm always glad I went. I'm always glad I went. And I'm so glad I came to Orlando this week. The response has been nothing short of overwhelming. I'm getting chills right now. It has been incredible. And first and foremost, those that, that saw me this week and had to bear through that for two hours, God bless you. And thank you. But I want to open up to all of you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the same offer that I gave them, right? So this is a 497 event for three days. It's the 27th, 28th, and 29th. If those days don't work for you, I'm sorry, we're not moving it at this point. But the 27th in the afternoon, the 28th all day, 29th all day, there are people coming from all over North America to come to your city. They all are 90 to 100% referral-based businesses, some of them doing over 1,000 transactions a year from referrals. So here's the thing, is normally this is a 497 ticket, but you can use OMC as your code. Yes, I spelled Masterclass Orlando wrong, obviously. It's Orlando Masterclass is what I use for the code. It's OMC, just OMC, three letters, and you will get $300 off that price. You don't have a flight, you don't have transportation. I will literally buy your two lunches, and trust me, they're going to be sweet. And you don't have transportation. You don't have hotel. You don't have any of the costs that everybody else has, has invested. Will you invest $197 into yourself and bet on yourself when it comes to your sphere? Because you know most of your transactions are going to come from your sphere anyway. Let's make it happen faster. Let's ha make it happen bigger. So it's rms22.com, use the code OMC. Listen, I'm not here to sell you on anything. We're almost sold out, it, it's awesome. I will say something to the sponsor partners. We do have room for one more sponsor partner and we will actually run an I love you a latte for you. We will do the invites, we will invite everyone, we will help you with the coffee and it's essentially just buying coffee but we will run it like we do in Event Mastery so it's literally a partnership opportunity. So if you're inter interested in that, just email at michael at referco.com. Michael at referco.com. And we'll schedule a call and we'll make that happen. Uh, if you're in security, I'm sorry. You can't be a sponsor. If you're in title, God bless you. I love you. But we have an exclusive sponsor already. And if you're in mortgage, I love you too. But the bottom line is we have an exclusive partner there already as well. But if you're outside of those realms... Let's partner and let's kick some butt, okay? All right, so 
I just want to sum it up by saying you're here today. Give yourself a round of applause for being here today. Put your hands together, right? Because what else could you be doing? You could be doing nothing. You could be sitting on the couch eating bonbons with your feet up watching the last Game of Thrones episode from last year and, and maybe catching up on House of Dragons. But you're here today learning, growing, expanding, making things happen in the Orlando marketplace. You're the movers and shakers. You're the master class. You're the masters. Today, how many of you learned something new or were reminded of something you should be doing? Raise your hand. I took two pages of notes, and I hopefully have mastered a lot of this stuff. It's been a lifelong study for me, and yet I'm back there taking two pages of notes from Rick. Rick was fantastic about open houses, wasn't he? Let's give him a hand, right? <laughs> I loved how Rick and Karen kind of went at it on the stage. Was that kind of good? Right, But what was cool is every time Rick said Karen's name, it was like branding for Karen. And every time Karen said Rick's name, it was like branding for Rick. If I didn't know who Rick was, it was like, oh, well, Karen likes him. <laughs> so how about Karen, the legend of Karen? Why? I mean, awesome. I don't know where she went, right? And then Janine, I didn't know you before, but I love you. I hope you're still here. I'd love to fist bump you because I love your whole spirit of partnering, and I love your spirit of charity, and I love what you're doing. And then how about Mariana, right? Mariana doing the events with the client events. Let's give her a round of applause, right? So, awesome stuff. I'm just gonna leave you with this. I, I can't stand up here without educating. It's just, it's who I am. The one thing that I really heard that I love is there are two types of goals. Maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't. One type of goal is an activity goal, and the other goal is a results goal. So Aaron asked, how do you judge the outcome of something? And we did hear a, a results goal, which is if I can just get one buyer, or if I can just get one referral, then it pays for itself. What I would like you to focus on in the fourth quarter are activities goals. What is the activity that leads to the result? Doing an open house, putting up the signs. Where's Karen at, right? Putting up the signs is an activity goal. I'm going to put up 50 signs for every open house. That is an activity goal that we know will lead to the result. Focus on activity goals in the fourth quarter. Just have the event. Just do the open house. Just do the work. Do the activity. Measure your activity on a daily basis. And one great thing to measure is conversations. How many conversations you have a day is the number one predictor of success in any sales. I got that from Chick-fil-A, believe it or not. <laughs> They're one of our clients. It's been crazy. I learn more from them, and they pay me. How about that? So here's the thing. I just want to say thank you so much. And I have to, I have to give this, this big guy a hug, right? I mean... Aaron Luden, what he's done in the Orlando area, the charities he's helped, the sponsor partners he's helped, the agents he's helped. He's not even a realtor, right? He is here producing real producers in two different areas. He is, I mean, he is an entrepreneur. He's a media mogul, baby. I'm telling you. Let's give it up for Mr. Aaron Luden. All right. Thank you, guys. One more round of applause for Michael J. Mayer. Grab his book and come out to Summit in two weeks. And uh, so I'm going to wrap this thing up. In the next month's session, October 20th, go to masterclassorlando.com and grab your free tickets while they're free. And I'm going to just throw one little plug out, and that is that the restaurant, the way that they measure success is by how many people stick around and buy drinks and food. So any of you that learned something today that want to stick around, grab some food, grab some drinks, hang out with us. Maybe Michael will even stick around and answer some questions or take some pictures if you guys come fast enough. And uh, let's give one more round of applause to all the panelists. And I'll see you guys next month. Thank you, guys. Oh, and one giant round of applause to Dave Stewart, who gets to basically deal with all the firefighting of any problems that come up. Dave is the one that's thrown into the fire every single month to make this thing happen, both online and for you to hear the audio. So a huge round of applause to Dave Stewart with D. Stewart Productions and his team. 
Thanks, y'all.